I got the same song mixed by five different mixers ranging in price from $75 to $1,000, and one of them is mine. So I'm a little nervous, but also excited to see if someone else took the song in a different direction or maybe a better direction than I did. And I did a similar experiment a little while ago where I paid three mixers to mix the same song and I compared the quality versus the price. And I was kind of disappointed that time. You know, I didn't think any of the mixes were that good, but I never checked out the multi-tracks for that song myself. So I really didn't have any context of what they were starting from or what I thought should have been possible for that mix. But this time I wanted to mix the song myself so I could be more familiar with it to know what the multi-tracks are like, know what the challenges are in mixing that song, just so that I can better evaluate all the mixes that I got back, and at the same time, put my neck out there with everyone else. All right, I've got all five mixes here in front of me, and I'm listening totally blind here. So I had my assistant do all of the hiring for this and get all the mixes back and just number them randomly. All I know is that one of these was hired from Fiverr, three of them were hired on Sound Better, and then one of them is mine. So. Let's just dive in and uh, see what we got here. So here's mix number one. So we start with this kind of soft synth piano thing here. Then the verse kicks in. Truth or dare Have you ever felt so much it felt like fear Like a If you try to keep them there, I wanna get lost in you. Okay, so far, vocals are very loud. It's kind of muffly, like woolly sounding. Um, and there's hardly any kick at all. I know the world is a rising tide, uncertain. Okay, this one's not sounding great. I'm gonna guess this is one of the lower price mixes. It's very, yeah, it's very muddy. Let's see if we can clean this up a bit. The, the top end of the acoustic guitar sounds nice. Um, Yeah, vocal just kind of buried, very uneven, low ends kind of jumping out here and there. All right, let's uh, let's try mix number two. Truth or dare? Have you ever felt so much it felt like fear? It sounds a lot better so far. I would almost think that it's mine, but my kick was a little brighter than that. Nice top end. Okay, this is pretty good. This this sounds like a pro mix to me. Especially, you know, I know these multi-tracks, right? I mixed it myself. I know what the challenges were, especially in the vocals. There was a ton of low end buildup, like a ton. And it was really hard to get that mid range and top ends sitting properly. And I think this mixer did a pretty good job of that. Truth or dare? Tell me the nightmares that the yeah, he also made an interesting choice that is similar to what I did. We haven't got to my mix yet, but there were a bunch of layers of snare sounds and snare samples. These were programmed drums. And one of them was like an 80s snare. It was labeled 80s snare. And I heard that and thought, yeah, that's the right vibe for this song. And it sounds like this mixer thought the exact same thing here. You can hear it's got that prominent kind of 80s sounding drum, mach drum machine snare. Distant lights. Ooh, I like that touch with the delay. Through the forest or the tallest, coldest waves. Okay, 
I love that, man. This is so interesting. Uh, it's going to be cool when we, when we get to my mix, whichever one of these it is, because I did some similar things with the delay. I like that. I know the world is a rising Nice. I mean, uh, this sounds like a pro mix to me. Um, the vocals are a little, a little wetter than I would have, and there's a pretty cool bass line throughout this whole song. That's, I think that he's got the low end really good here. Um, it's a little bit scooped. I'd like to hear more mid range of that bass, but overall, this, this is a good mix. It sounds like a pro mix. Have you ever loved so much and made you scared? Okay, cool. So that, that one's a good mix. All right, let's try mix three. So the synth is like barely there. By the way, I did try to volume match these, mostly just listening to the level of the vocal so that as I'm switching back and forth between the mixes, at least the vocals like a consistent level just kind of guessing by ear so you know i'm trying to not let volume itself deceive me but um i know there's gonna be a ton of comments about that but you know you got to pick one element of the mix because the balance is so different so rather than just use a number like i'm listening to have the vocal kind of in the same spot in each mix truth or dare have you ever loved so much it felt like fear all right so you hear that Hear that low end buildup on that vocal? Here's uh, mix two, which is a more pro sounding mix. Truth or dare. Listen to mix three. Truth or dare. Have you ever loved so much it felt like fear? Like the worst would tear your insides if you tried to keep them there. I want to get lost. In you. Okay, so to me this sounds like a like a decent rough mix kind of. Drums are are kind of weak, kind of papery. I know the world is a rise. Vocals kind of too loud and not controlled like the low end on the vocal is way too much. Hey, to restless night. I'll be your constant in the chain. A little too bright overall. Disarray. Truth or dare. Tell me. So it sounds like this person, like, they've got kind of a basic grasp of what they're doing with the mix, but they just haven't gone far enough at all. They haven't been aggressive enough. Like with that vocal. Man, I had to cut a ton of low end, so like in multiple stages, um, do some multi-band stuff, even some automation on the EQ. And with the drums, they're kind of like, they're there, but they don't really have that punch and impact. And they're kind of like, they're a little bit timid, right? Like you want you want to decide like, what's the vibe of these drums? You know, like with that 80 snare, are you gonna have that up front? Or are you gonna have one of the more normal sounding snares up front? This one's kind of like, the snare's kind of buried. It's not really making any statement at all. When the dreams wake you. Bass needs to go way up. I know the world is a rising tide uncertain. So, you know, it's it's not like it's not a horrible mix, but it's just not quite hitting that pro level yet. Alright, let's check out mix four. I know that mine was not this quiet, so I'm guessing that this one's probably mine. Yeah, I put that delay on the piano. Truth or dare? Have you ever loved so much it felt like fear? Like the words would say you so remember uh, i was saying there were some similarities between mix two which i thought sounded good and then mine so listen to the delay throw at the end very similar to what the other mixer did then there's that 80 snare very prominent i'd say i went a little deeper and warmer with it would say your insides if you tried to keep them Uncertain day after I love you through the distance. 
Okay, let's switch back and forth between mix two and mine here. Truth or dare? Tell me the nightmares that the morning can't quite shake. Distant lights through the forest go the tallest, coldest waves. So it's interesting comparing these two mixes. Now that I hear mix two here. I, I like the top end brightness. I like that he's gone a little more aggressive and kind of given that nice top end sheen, whereas mine's a little more mid rangey, uh, a little warm and fuzzy compared to that one. Uh, I th honestly think probably a middle ground, a combination of those two, you know, like either taking his mix and then just beefing up the low mids, turning up the bass a bit to hear that bass line. I really tried to make that uh, very upfront and a focus of the song. Um, so putting that into his mix with that extra top end would have been nice. Uh, or, on, or on the flip side, taking my mix and then adding a little more of that extra punch and top end sheen that he added. Uh, as I was mixing this, I was referencing a lot of this uh, Paramore album here, uh, After Laughter. It sounds like this. So it's kind of dark, it's kind of warm, right? Through the forest, go the tallest, coldest waves. Or his mix too is brighter, but... Uh, I kind of like that. I know the world is a rising tide, uncertain day, a restless night. I'll be a constant in a change. I will love you through the disarray. Yeah, maybe now that I hear this other, this other mix, someone took it in a slightly different direction. I think maybe my vocal could have been a little brighter. Okay, one more mix to go. Let's do mix number five. So, you know, obviously I always say don't mix with your eyes, but you can tell by the waveforms, right? Like, you can tell this is maybe not going to be good. Who, who, you know, who knows? Maybe I'll be proven wrong. Truth or dare? Have you ever loved so much it felt like fear? Like the word. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there's like no low end or anything in here. This is like kind of bizarre. It honestly almost sounds like it sounds like someone took an EQ in the whole mix and like did that. Very, very scooped, very bright and kind of harsh in the top end. So to me, I'm going to guess that whoever makes this, their listening environment, their monitors are like really wonky and they're really not hearing much. They're probably hearing a huge buildup of low mids or something and they're just scooping it out like crazy and making it too bright and probably not referencing properly uh, because this, you know, it really doesn't sound anything like a mix that's out there on Spotify. Tell me the nightmares that the morning can't quench. Like it's shockingly, shockingly different. So make sure, uh, to me, I feel like just five seconds of lis listening to a reference track would fix that problem. So make sure you're referencing when you're mixing. I know the world is a rising tide on a certain day after restless night. Yeah, and another thing that came up in the multi-tracks, you can hear it in this song, or in this mix, is that I think maybe when uh, it was bounced out, when the tracks were bounced out, there was some automation written in there, and when they bounced it out from Logic or whatever DAW it was, that volume automation got written to the file. So a lot of the drum tracks would have like all the hits, kind of consistent uh, velocity, you could say, and then randomly there'd be like a kick that was like way hotter, you know, or sometimes on the guitars or on some of the pads, you know, it was at a consistent volume and then one little chunk of it was like way up, right? Uh, and so as a mixer for me, when I was mixing the drums and choosing my drum sounds uh, for that 80s snare to deal with that, I literally grabbed like one of the hits of the 80s snare, 
exported that, loaded that into Trigger, and I replaced that whole um, that whole track so that I would have consistent velocity across the whole thing. So again, it's just those extra little details, right? And I did the same thing with Mix 2, which I thought sounded like a pro mix. You don't hear stuff like jumping out like that. So all of these things, these little like issues with the tracks, as a pro, you've got to go through that and you've got to put in the time to deal with that. Whereas in this one, you can hear how one of these kicks just all of a sudden jumps out of the speaker. You hear how that one just like out of nowhere, it's just super loud. So, okay. All right, we've heard all five. I told you which one is mine. Let's just skip back and forth a little bit more and I'll start ranking these. Tell me the nightmares that the morning can't quite shake Distant lights Through the forest or the tallest, coldest waves I wanna be Okay, I'm gonna say mix five is last place, sorry Tell me the nightmares that the morning can't Deciding between these two is kinda hard they're both very similar in the vocals they didn't deal with the low end kind of a toss-up they're pretty close i think maybe i'd rank mix one a little higher just because it's got a fatter fuller mid-range Tell me the nightmares that the morning can't quite shake Distant lights Mix 3's got more clarity though, man I wanna be who you When the dreams wake you Cause all of my All right, I'm going to say mix three is in third place, mix one and fourth, although those are basically tied. And now between mine and mix two. Um, I know the world is a rising tide. So again, guys, just as I switch forth, just you know, for the sake of instruction here, listen to the differences between these. Mostly the energy. Like when you're mixing, it's it's kind of managing the energy of the song and keeping it steady, keeping it driving, keeping it consistent, not having it kind of start to lag or or feel like it's it's weak, right? So if you listen to these courses, uh, you know, mix one and three I know the versus two and four. There's an aliveness. They kind of just jump more out of the speaker. So you need to have that. In fact, Mix 2, I think, has the most energy. And I, I like that. I, I hear mine and I'm kind of like, oh, I, I think I could have pushed mine a little further here. I know the world is a rising All right, it's hard to choose which is number one between mix two and my mix. I'm obviously a little biased, but you know I don't want to be I don't want to be like that. So maybe I'll just take mine out of the running. But uh, I want to hear in the comments below. Let me know which mix you thought was best. Cause I think I think I'm being fair and and not uh, not too uh, too much of an egomaniac to to think that these two mixes are pretty close. I, I'd say they're tied, and I like parts of each of them. I, I, I hear Mix 2 and I think, oh, I could have gone in that direction a little bit, but I think Mix 2 is maybe lacking just a bit of the low mids and the fat mid range. So we know that version four is my mix. That's the thousand dollar mix. Okay. That's what I would typically charge for a mix like this. So that's mine. And again, let's just take it out of the running. I'll let you guys vote um, where you think that one lands. And for the rest of them, I'm going to guess that Mix 2 is probably I'm like 99% sure Mix 2 is going to be the most expensive one out of the ones we hired. And I'm guessing Mix 3 and 1, you know, those were kind of in the middle that I said were kind of tied. Those are going to be like a middle range price, probably like 300 to 500 maybe. 
Uh, and then uh, version five is gonna be, I'm guessing the fiber. That's my prediction, okay? So let's, let's go from version five up. All right, so version five, I thought this was the worst mix that was submitted. Let's see who it was. <laughs> no way. What? 450 bucks for this? Oh my gosh. That's a problem. <laughs> okay. All right. This just took a completely unexpected turn. Okay. All right. I thought in, in uh, fourth place was mix number one. Let's see who did mix number one. 250 sound better okay i thought mix one was going to be in that mid-range 250 bucks let's hear it again I yeah i mean that's that's 200 250 mix i get that okay next up was mix number three so this has got to be the fiver one it's got to be the don't tell me again <laughs> don't tell me that mix two that is you know the best mix is a fiver i really don't want to find that out Okay, <laughs> all right. Version three was the fiver. Okay, interesting. I thought version one and version three were like pretty neck and neck. Different vibes, but like in terms of overall quality, pretty much the same. Pretty big difference in price. You know, basically like three X the price. All right, and then that leaves version two, which was the best mix uh, that we hired for 650 bucks from Sound Better. I think that's a fair price. You probably could charge a little more. Now, I've seen comments in the other videos that I've done like this where everyone's like, wow, I should be charging for my mixes. Or people say the lesson I learned is I should be charging more. And that probably is the lesson, but it's like, it's yes and no. Like, I don't think version five is not worth $450. That's, that is overpriced for sure. On the other end, this $650 mix is underpriced. And so is the Fiverr mix. The $250 one, probably the right price so if you take anything away from this like you should be charging something okay don't be afraid to charge something so because you can see there's people out there charging way more than you and doing a worse job and i i remember learning that lesson when i was in the studio like way back when i was starting out i would record local bands and they come to me and this was before i was really you know consider myself you know at pro level yet and i'd record these local bands and you know i'd be charging a few hundred bucks a song and they would tell me, oh, you had a horrible experience at this big studio. And I'd be like, how much did you pay them? And they'd be like, oh, we paid like $1,000 a song. And I would listen to it and it was like horrible. It was worse than I was even doing. And that was like a, a really big eye opener for me. Just like, <laughs> I promise you, there's people out there charging way more for way less quality. So don't undersell yourself. One more thing, there were some notes that my assistant made in terms of the process of, of finding these people and hiring them. So nothing really stands out here. Uh, the only thing is that every single person discounted their original rate. So I'm not sure what happened there, but um, the $250 mix was originally quoted at 500 and went down. The 650 mix was originally quoted at 700. The Fiverr one was listed at 90 and we got it at 75. And then the $450 mix was originally quoted at 500. So basically everyone dropped their rates, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure if this is what happened. I would have to ask, but I see this all the time where people will receive a quote request from a client and they'll instantly discount it. Like, well, normally my rate's 700, but I'll do it for 600. You know, it's like, you don't have to do that until you get a negative response. Like just throw the price out there and wait. Um, other than that, the most expensive uh, mixer at 650 bucks, uh, he did ask for a little bit more. Uh, now we didn't change anything with the tracks, but he did uh, come back and say he prepped the files. Uh, he also had a, a PDF that he sent for stem prep, but again, we sent the exact same tracks to everyone. Um, he said the piano sustain pedal was like the timing of it seemed to be not lifting right. So he asked if it was MIDI, could the producer maybe just adjust that and change that. I see what he means here. It's, it's in the intro of the track here. Let's check it out. You can hear the sustain just die off a little bit. So yeah, I definitely noticed that. I didn't think it was a huge deal, but he even had a note that it, it was bugging him enough that he said, even if it's not MIDI, could the piano player just replay that that intro potentially? Uh, again, we didn't do that. So he was a, clearly just more professional, right? Just uh, sending out expectations beforehand and then also finding something that bothered him and 
trying to reach out and try to make it better. Now, for me, at this point, when I've already started prepping the tracks and I'm mixing the song, I'm typically not doing that. Like, it's like, it's time to mix. I scheduled this day to mix. I'm not gonna sit around and wait for a day or two for like getting those tracks back, all right? So I would just go ahead and mix it. But, you know, I do appreciate the attention to detail, which is part of what makes him a better mixer. And so there's always a surprise when I do this, but at least we got a really good mix this time. I'm just shocked at the $450 mix. You know, pricing can be so, can be so weird. It can be so slippery, but if you take that one out of the equation, I, I think there is a general trend in the industry and the overall market. You know, a mix that you get for anything less than $500, you're kind of in a hit or miss range. You know, you could find someone who's pretty decent, but is undercharging. But generally you're gonna get someone who's kind of just the average Joe home studio owner who's not really at a pro level yet, but can get something that's at least listenable. But once you're getting above $500 for a mix, and I'm talking about just a mix, not necessarily full production, that's getting into pro territory. And whether it's 600, 700, 800, a thousand bucks, maybe more, the gap between how those mixes sound is gonna be a lot smaller than in the lower range. And again, once you're above that 500 mark, like it kind of comes down to reputation, uh, demand, track record. Like what other artists has that mixer worked with uh, on their roster recently? And also how courageous are they in valuing themselves? That's really what it comes down to once you get into these bigger numbers. And there really isn't much of a ceiling there. It can go up quite high, you know, into multiple thousands, five, maybe even approaching $10,000 per song for the top top mixers. But I enjoyed putting myself into the fray here. It was kind of nerve wracking, but also cool to see uh, the direction that another pro mixer took this song. And I definitely learned something there and heard it and said, hmm, you know, like, I kind of like what he did there. I actually I actually like that part of the mix better than what I did. So it's always great to, to get those sorts of outside insights. Now the next step is I'm going to take my mix of the song and I'm going to get it mastered by a few of the biggest top dollar mastering studios around and I'm going to compare those. So stay tuned for that video. Definitely comment below. Let me know which mix you thought was best and why. I'm really interested to hear that. And if you liked this video, check out another one here where I paid five different mastering engineers to work on the same song and the result was pretty surprising there too. All right, thanks for watching. See you next time.